Hey everyone, welcome to this third video on reading comprehension. In this video, we'll specifically deal with the big picture questions. Now these questions check your overall understanding of the passage and questions you will see like, what do you think is the central idea of the author? What do you think is the purpose of writing this passage? Or what do you think is the tone used by the author throughout the passage? So what I'll do in this video is I will discuss approach, how to attack these uh, kind of questions and we will also solve two questions uh, on different passages uh, to see that you are very good and your accuracy is up to the mark in these questions okay so now there are three types of big idea questions so one is the central idea or your primary purpose or main idea questions now these are very obvious now you need not read this passage to understand or to answer this question because obviously if you've read the passage carefully, that means active reading, which I told you earlier, right? If you're reading the passage actively, that means if you're involved, you will obviously notice the central idea of the passage. Now, typically you will see that right from the first paragraph itself, it's important for you to, uh, you know, try to understand, okay, what is the central idea? So first paragraph and the last paragraph becomes very, very important. If you read those two passages carefully, 95% of the times you'll be able to figure out the central idea there itself. The other thing I would tell you is that please pay attention to repetitive words. That means if a passage is talking about Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi, Gandhi again and again, that means obviously if the passage revolves around that one, two, three things, that means those things have to be the main idea, right? Those things have to be central to the passage. So these are some of the things that you should pay attention to. Now, this is a very common question type that you will get on these big picture questions. Sometimes you will also get questions like tone and structure. Now, you will not get these questions on tones and structure in, let's say, campus placements or your net exam, but then some high level exams like CAT or XATZ is where you will get questions on tone and structure. But it's always good to be prepared in advance. So let's say if a question comes on tone, you should be able to handle it. Now, what is tone? Tone is nothing but the choice of words the author is using and something that tells you that, okay, is the tone. Now, for you to be able to distinguish the tones, there are three types of basic tones. One is that the tone is a positive tone. That means the author has a positive tone overall. It could be that the author has a very neutral tone and then the author may have a negative tone. Now within these itself, for example, if you're talking about positive tone, now positive tone also may have certain degrees of positivity. So for example, the author could be very assertive in what he's saying. That is also a positive tone. The author may be, let's say, appreciative of certain efforts that uh, a company or let's say the government have taken so you may say okay the author is appreciative but the author could also be the extreme of positive it could be illogical or laudatory meaning he's just singing praise and only talking positive about you know a particular aspect it could be about an author it could be about a particular player it could be about government whatever it is so these are all positive tones but then in positive also you should be able to understand the difference between the, dif the degrees of these different words. Now, neutral standpoint is that most of the good authors that you will see in the newspaper or otherwise, they usually uh, will take a very neutral approach. That means they will be very objective. So if they are talking about, let's say, a particular act, let's say CAA, right? So they'll talk about the negative side of things. They will. They may also talk about the positive side of things, but they may not really pass their judgment or opinion it's up to you but they'll be able to show you the two sides of the coin very well so that's an objective tone right uh, the disinterested tone right so these are different words you can uh, give to the neutral tone it could also be certain factual uh, tones that means it's really fact based and just data but he's not giving any opinion as to what the author thinks on that particular topic now in terms of negative tone there could be some negative tones as well. So for example, tone could be uh, he's a little pessimistic about a new approach, let's say that people are suggesting we should take. Now it could also be 
ही इज वेरी क्रिटिकल और सिनिकल राइट और एक्सट्रीम कुड ऑल्सो बी दैट ही इज वेरी कॉन्डिसेंडिंग राइट दैट मीन्स एनी अप्रोच दैट द पर्सन इज टेकिंग लेट से ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द नेगेटिव साइड ऑफ अ सर्टन कॉपरेट स्ट्रक्चर राइट सो ही इज ओनली टॉकिंग अबाउट नेगेटिव थिंग सो दीज आर द डिफरेंट डिग्रीज ऑफ नेगेटिविटी ऑल्सो सो दीज आर हाउ यू कैन आंसर द टोन क्वेश्चन नाउ वॉट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर यू टू डू इज दैट इफ यू हैव टू क्रैक दीज क्वेश्चन गेट बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ टोन्स दैट मीन्स जस्ट गूगल द टाइप्स ऑफ टोन्स ऑफ पैसेजेस एंड यूल गेट द वर्ड सो यू शुड बी फमिलियर विद दोज वर्ड्स इफ यू नॉट फमिलियर विद दोज वर्ड्स इट कुड बी अ प्रॉब्लम सो इट मे बॉइल डाउन टू रियली वो कैबिलरी इन दोज क्वेश्चन एंड ऑल्सो पे स्पेशल अटेंशन टू द चॉइस ऑफ वर्ड्स दैट द ऑथर इज यूजिंग नाउ दीज आर क्वेश्चन ऑन टोन्स नाउ वॉट इज स्ट्रक्चर स्ट्रक्चर अगेन सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू आर गिवन लेट से पैसेज एंड लेट से देर आर फोर पैराग्राफ इन दैट पैसेज यू शुड सी हाउ द आर्ग्यूमेंट्स आर फ्लोइंग दैट मीन्स हाउ द आर्ग्यूमेंट्स आर कंस्ट्रक्टेड इट कुड बी दैट द ऑथर इज टॉकिंग अबाउट कॉज ऑफ सम नेचुरल डिजास्टर एंड देन ही इज टेलिंग ओके बिकॉज ऑफ दिस दिस विल हैपन राइट इट कुड बी एनीथिंग इट कुड बी अर्थ क्वेक इट कुड बी ग्लोबल वार्मिंग और एनीथिंग लाइक दैट और ही कुड ऑल्सो talk really in comparison terms that means he is really using comparison and contrast to prove his point or it could be that he gives you starts with a problem statement and then ultimately is giving you some solution to that now these are nothing but ways how the passage could be structured so these are the three types of questions that you can get which check your high level understanding of the passage now with this let's actually practice some questions so that you feel confident uh, after watching this video so let's say here is a passage for you and there is one question on the same so i'll start the timer and you may want to read the passage and then answer this question Okay last 5 seconds i hope you've read the passage Okay so what's the question on the passage the question says what is the main concern of the author so really the overall understanding of the passage is what this question is testing Now if you've read the passage carefully uh, you will notice that okay what is really the main concern of the passage something that's repetitive something that he is talking about again and again Now if you see in this passage after reading the first paragraph you may not have a great understanding of the main concern of the author but then he comes to it ultimately right it says it was then i realized to my horror that i had forgotten how to write now and then he talks about my entire existence is on computer this that emails etc and then he talks about a poll also was conducted uh, for uh, of 1000 teens by the stationers and they found out that they've never used you know a pen uh, very rarely do they write etc etc so what's the main concern of the author that the teens use social network for communication now he did mention that the teens use social network but is that the main concern no that's a side issue right the teens use mobile phones right so mobile phones was mentioned but again that's a side issue right teens use computer again he's mentioned that but are these the main concern the central idea no the main concern is that the teens have forgotten the art of handwriting and this is what he has been mentioning and even if you see the last paragraph he says handwriting is one of the most creative outlets we have and should be given the same importance etc etc so it is option d so ultimately the these questions which test you on overall understanding what becomes very important is the scope of the passage that means whenever you are marking an option just make sure that your options are all inclusive that is your option really takes care of the scope right if you've not written handwriting for a passage like that and if that's not coming in your main concern that means you are really way wrong right 
so these are some important things to remember now let's look at uh, this second passage and try to uh, find out what is the main focus of the passage here Okay, last five seconds. All right, so I hope you've read the passage. Now, the question is, what is the main focus of the passage, right? So the main focus of the passage is on what? Is it is it resolution of water conflict? Is it encouraging bilateral cooperation? Is it management of water as a valuable resource? There is river interlinking. There are multiple things that is being talked about, but then where heads of this thing came together to discuss the mankind's most valuable resource right and it was about sharing water so water water is something that's throughout there in the passage right and then finally he says fight against contamination of riverbeds and then he talks about mankind in phase with two beds water is too powerful to be fought over and too valuable a resource to be lost so what is the main focus of the passage is it resolution of water conflicts? Okay, maybe. Let's look at another option. We'll reject to select. Encouraging bilateral cooperation. Now, encouraging bilateral cooperation over what? So, a very important point that this one's missing, right? A river interlinking. Is it about rivers and interlinking? Probably not, right? But it's about uh, management of water as a valuable resource. So, either of these two options. Now, if you look at the overall passage, it's not just about that you know they're talking about a water conflict and how to resolve it throughout the passage but it's at an overall level that okay how water is an important resource and something that should be managed properly so therefore if you look, look at the scope i would say c is a better option right so i hope you got a good understanding of these uh, high level questions which check your overall understanding and i hope you found the video helpful and yes, don't forget to subscribe, like and follow our channel. Also, you can go to our website for free resources, www.stepuplearning.net. Thanks for watching the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.